I'm Chris McDonough, a retired homicide detective. I've interviewed thousands of people, from serial killers to ministers. Welcome to the interview room. Hey, aloha, everybody. Welcome to the interview room. Wow. How was your Thanksgiving? Did everybody have a blessed Thanksgiving with your friends and your family? And those of you who are by yourself know that you were in our prayers. Uh, the McDonough's, uh, you know, we, 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 were, we said a lot of prayers for a lot of people. It's great to see everybody tonight. Um, and, you know, boy, we've got a great, great program for you. We really appreciate you being here. If you're here from another channel, uh, our friends have sent you over. I just have one thing I want to ask tonight, that we just uh, treat each other with kindness. Uh, my chat is not a place uh, where, you know, I, I want any fighting at all. Uh, it's no disagreements, uh, no bashing of other um you know, creators or anything to that effect. Our family and our mods work very, very hard uh, to keep our chat clear. Uh, it's bad enough that we have trolls. Uh, it gets worse when we, you know, start uh, disliking each other. Okay. That's not what we're about. And our TR, our TIR family and our mods, as you know, we have the best mods, in my opinion, on YouTube. Uh, and by golly, you know, there is enough uh, problems in the world where, you know, for maybe an hour or an hour and a half that we can just talk about a little girl uh, and her connection uh, to her family and the fact that she's missing. That's what TIR is about, and that's where we want to keep it. So if you have disagreements, that's okay, but don't put them in my chat. I'm going to give you a warning tonight. Uh, last week, it just got crazy uh, too quickly. And, um, by golly, you know, we, we had to shut it down to members only. And, uh, so we will do that again if it ever gets to that place, but I don't think it will because I think we're old enough and mature enough, uh, to treat each other with respect. So that said, it's time to find out where you're calling in from. Tell me where you're at tonight. And then we're going to get started. Let's do a roll call. Shall we? Aloha, Scotland in the house. The Kiwis, thank you. Toronto, Nell, great seeing you here tonight. Melanie, Seattle, Washington, it's great to have you here. Thank you. Texas gal, Brownwood, Texas. Sally Birch from Wisconsin in the house. Becky Danu, I hope I pronounced your name right in Georgia. Teresa Mung in Fort Worth. Woo, hook them horns. Janie B, Colorado, outstanding. Allie, New Zealand, thank you. Melissa B, Stillwater, uh, Minnesota, thank you. Shoreline, Washington, Teresa. Uh, Jan, Bernard, hi, Chris from Ontario, Canada. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you. Rojo, Indiana. Woo, 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 woo. Kelly S, hello from New York, New York. New York's in the house. Michigan. Yeah, I married a Michigan girl, Sandy, as you know. Rachel from South Dakota slash Minnesota. Thank you so much for being here. Julie, Knoxville, Tennessee. Great town. Love Knoxville. JRM, blessings from Kansas. Thank you. Blessings back to you, JR. Blessings back to you. Hello, TIR family Nita. Hope you have a blessed day. Absolutely. Today was the best day. 
and tomorrow's going to even be better. But tonight's going to be wonderful. Luna, New Mexico. Love New Mexico. Been to Albuquerque many times. Pigeon Forge, Tennessee in the house. Love it. Right next to Gallenberg. Uh, Ohio, Shelly and Bell. Shell Bell, Jacqueline, Iowa. Great to see you here. Uh, <laughs> I miss Blessing, Ontario, Canada. Boy, did he marry up. There's no question about that. Philosopho, Redondo Beach, California. Way to go. Love that boardwalk down there. Classic TV Western Nut, Alabama. Boom. Hillary Collins from Ireland. Top of the morning to you, Hillary. Thank you for staying up with us. And I know we have some friends here from uh, uh, also England. Debbie, great to see you at Kent, Washington from Kent. Washington, I know somebody was in the house from Whidbey Island up there by Deceptions Pass. Barbara, good evening from Idaho. And Portsmouth, UK, thank you so much for staying up with us. Get the coffee. You're going to need it because we're going to get into some great stuff. Nova Scotia, wow, great to see you. I've got some uh, folks up there, uh, family. Donna Fay from my lineage, Florida, great to see you. Okay, wow. Oh, South Africa, Tracy, thank you so much for being here. It's great to see you tonight. And uh, as you as you guys can tell, Miss Karen got me the board, and I'm uh, I'm trying to figure out how this thing works. But by golly, you know we're going to figure it out as we go along. Uh, and uh, I've got some sound effects in here. Listen to this one. Let's see if I can get it to work. Uh, looks, oh, you know why I turn it down. There you go. How about that? How about that? So, wow, here we are. Here we are tonight. And, uh, I hope you guys had, uh, just an absolute blessed, blessed, uh, Thanksgiving day. And, you know, I can't, we cannot do any of this without our members, our subscribers. So if you're just new with us for the very first time, please take a moment, hit that subscribe button. Uh, ring that bell. Make sure you set it so that you get annou announcements when we do go live. This is a live broadcast tonight. And, of course, we can't do it without our amazing mods. Uh, and we have a, an amazing team here, as you're going to hopefully find out if you're just joining with us. We have Miss Sophia, who's our team lead. Maui girl, she's like the number two assistant there. Uh, Mimi J2, Four Sons Mom, Stephanie H., and, of course, Stephanie Herb. We are so grateful for the time that our mods put into our channel. This is what makes our channel great and why we have the amount of subscribers that we do. It's certainly not because of me. It's because of us. And we are an amazing team, and it's just always such a privilege uh, to have them on board uh, with us. So uh, I uh, slowed everything down tonight so that they have an opportunity uh, to do what they do best. I mean, we've got almost 3,500 people in here right now. Uh, and you can imagine uh, those of you who are mods for other channels, uh, what it's like uh, to, uh, you know, to, to, to keep up, okay, to keep up. So why are we here? Well, uh, Dill, let's play the first video, shall we? Okay, I think we'll get started here. I want to thank everybody for coming here today. This week marks 10 years in the disappearance of Rosemarie Bly. 10 years ago, Rosemarie Bly left her residence in rural St. Croix Falls, destined for Cushing, and she never has been seen since. At the Sheriff's Office, our goal here is to take a new investigative approach to this cold case. We've produced a video. We're going to show that video in a little bit. We're going to provide you a copy of the video as well. Our hope is that we can stimulate some talk in the social media avenues, as well as just get our message out to the community that we are still looking for answers to the mystery of the disappearance of Rose Bly. Um, her mother has not seen her in 10 years. Um, our community wants these questions answered. Since 2009, we've handled over 200 tips on this case, and we've interviewed over 150 people. We're hoping that by releasing this video that we can 
gain some more information that somebody out there knows something and they can come forward and help us bring this mystery to a close. Chad, would you like to show the video? Okay, let's stop it right there for a sec, Dill. Okay, a couple of things. First of all, this video uh, was made in 2019 uh, by the Sheriff's Department. Okay, so it's already stale, as we say in the business. Okay, and then they created this secondary uh, uh, production piece, which I'm going to show you, which is well done, by the way. It's very well done. Uh, but this was a presser, and we're going to go, it's going to skip through here in a second uh, because they're going to get past the video and they're going to get right into the rest of the presser. Uh, the reason I'm, I'm setting this up tonight is because. Uh, this sheriff is still on board, uh, and he is still trying to uh, piece together some of the um, uh, the disappearance of Rose Bly. Okay. Uh, that said, let's uh, let's go through. Uh, keep playing, Dill, and welcome everybody. If you're just getting with us in here, you're going to see it kind of jump through. I'm going to skip, 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 skip. And here we go. Okay, that was at the conclusion of the video, and now he's going to get into the pressure. Okay, the video ended. We had the age-enhanced photo, and we've had one blown up here. Um, if Rose is out there, obviously... Um, we believe she could look like that. So we felt that was important to this case. We also have the tip line, 715-485-8300. Uh, and if anybody out there knows anything about Rose Bly, please come forward. Um, our hope is that Rose Bly could come home and knock on the door and say, Mom, I'm home. But uh, we, we really am asking for help for some information. So I, I thank all of you for coming today. Um, we've given you the copy of that video. Share it. You have our right, our permission to share the video, to take whatever you need from that. Does anybody have any questions they would like to ask? The confusion, I guess, on the, pl the plan that she was going to Cushing to meet with a cousin, I understand. Or, I, mean, I guess that's kind of always been a little unclear as to what happened that night when she didn't show up? Was there, was it just I got stood up, you know, or did she just kind of blow it off? Or uh, I, that was, that's kind of confusing as to how. Right. Um, Greg, there's been a lot of information pertaining to this case. And when, when the case unfolded, um, it was largely thought at initially as, you know, a missing person case. Um, but, you know, we've looked at a lot of angles on this. And again, our, our focus now is to shift and try something new. This this is new for us to reach out and do a video and, and try to get this out into the public. Um, somebody knows where she was going. Somebody knows what happened, where she is. And that's what we're really hoping to, to gather. Where will this be shared to get exposure? Well, we are going to be boosting it on our sheriff's office uh, Facebook, so Polk County Sheriff's Department Facebook. Um, we will have that on there. And, you know, if we can get some media coverage of this story, we would greatly appreciate that. Uh, we'll also have it on the Polk County Sheriff's Department's website, which is also linked to the Facebook. Okay, so let's stop, Bill. Okay, so this poor guy, uh, it's, it's obvious that he is... Um, anxious to get this case uh, some new light. Now, this was obviously in 2019, so, you know, it's old, okay? And it's stale, as we as I said. Um, so he puts up a, an enhanced photograph of what she may look like uh, today, uh, but you can really tell, um, you know, it's like E.F. Hutton, uh, you know, talking right here uh, because there is nobody there but your local paper. And, you know, so he'll get a he'll get a half of a byline uh, about, you know, the pressure. And that's pretty much where it's been sitting. OK, 
So, Dale, let's take that down for a second. So let's recap here, okay? Uh, so a couple of questions tonight for for all of us uh, in our family, and 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 I call you all family because you are. Uh, if you're if you're part of the TIR uh, subscriber or a member, uh, we absolutely uh, call you family, and we appreciate you being here very much. So, so let's talk a little bit about uh, the family. Okay, Rose, for a second. Okay. For, first of all, have you guys been thinking about the odds of two family members from the same family absolutely vanish? I mean, not just disappear, but absolutely vanish. Okay. What are the odds? Uh, um, put your, show me what you think in the chat out there, because, um, I, I, yeah, lottery odds, odds. Yeah. Teresa, exactly. Lottery odds. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm coming to think that as well. I'm coming to think that. So today we're going to discuss Rose. Okay. And you know, it's an, it, at that time is 11 year old case and she is the sister of Candace. Those of you who are not familiar with it, uh, this is the sister of Candace uh, Wells slash Bly. And Candace, as you know, is mom to five-year-old Summer. So at the time, you know, Summer, who's been missing now close to six months, uh, that her sister goes dis her sister goes missing uh under some suspicious circumstances okay and so i just want to kind of recap uh what those circumstances were and just have a a, a you know just kind of bring in some thoughts that i have uh after looking at this and by the way we're going to interview uh some uh folks this week um that uh, I think you will find very interesting. Uh, and, you know, we're going we're gonna to start seeing if there's a correlation in relationship to this family and people, i.e. family members, uh, just vanishing. Okay. So Rose was just a few days shy of her 22nd birthday uh, when she disappeared, i.e. vanished. Uh, August 9th, 2009. At the time, okay, she had two small children, one and two-year-old uh, children. She was described uh, as a devoted mom in public uh, forums. Now, remember, how many lives do we live? Okay, We live our private life, our public life, and our secret life. Okay. So what I want to do uh, is, with, with everybody here tonight is let's try to figure out what we see in the public, private, and secret persona. Okay. So we have uh, all of those. Okay. Those, those types of lives, right? Okay. I want to figure out as we go forward and see if there's a correlation between summer and rose and and the people around it around her around them okay so in this particular situation in her public persona she's described as a devoted mom okay and she's married to a gentleman um we all know who he is cl i'll use those initials uh, and they had been married for about six months Yet they have, uh, you know, a couple of kids here. So I don't know what the totality of those circumstances are yet. Uh, maybe somebody else does. And if so, uh, go ahead and throw it up into the chat so I can get educated on what you may know. Okay. Uh, they were living in a house in St. Croix uh, Falls, Wisconsin. Now, I know that area very well. Uh, the reason I know it, because that's where uh, Brandon Wilson hailed from 
who killed Matthew Checky in the bathroom in Southern California in the case that I worked. Uh, and you can see who that guy was uh, in my video, um, you know, the videos in the on the channel here. You can see his confession where he enacted uh, that I was Brandon or excuse me, Matthew. So uh, he used me as the victim. Well, he hailed from this uh, part of the country. And so we had an opportunity in that investigation to come to get to know this area. Uh, she was living there with her husband, um, CL. And allegedly, she decides uh, to leave the house after dinner with her father-in-law and her husband. So the first question I, you know, that strikes me is the father-in-law seems to be an enigma here, which I correlate that to almost um, Summer's grandmother. Uh, I have not been able to find too much information about CL's dad. Uh, just like we have not heard from Summer's grandma. Okay. So I, what I want to do is if somebody, you know, kind of let's kind of keep, you know, tabs on um, correlated coincidences, I guess uh, is what, I'll, what we'll call them. And, and, and I don't know if they're related, which doesn't sound like they could be. Uh, but, you know, let's just keep it up on the board in the public persona. So she leaves the house uh, and the, the public messaging is that she's headed to meet a cousin for drinks. And there's been some, you know, different uh, places uh, that have been, you know, bantered about in relationship to where she was headed. Uh, one thing the sheriff's department has said that, uh, they found her vehicle and there's been two different, there's even been speculation about that. Uh, one from the sheriff's department reported, uh, and it's a media report as well, uh, that it was found by, uh, where truckers hang out, uh, and that the distance was some 30 miles, uh, from, uh, her house. Okay. Uh, media, according to the media as well, there apparently was no uh, discovery of her car keys as well. Okay. And, we, and we're going to talk about that a little bit deeper here in a second, okay. why, that's a, why that's important. Because um, I have a, you know, just a couple of thoughts that I'll share with you on um, that car uh, scenario as a whole. So she marries uh, Chris Lar uh, CL. Uh, in 2009, uh, and he is the father of their two children, their two daughters, who, by the way, are, you know, much older today, right? So I want to be sensitive uh, to them. So in 2009, right after they get married, about four months into the marriage, uh, now we have a little secret life uh, coming up. And that uh, is where the, the popo, uh, is called to their house in a domestic uh, as a result of um, some arguing, okay? As a result of some arguing, okay? Uh, hang on, we've got a lot of things happening here. This is very cool. Thank you so much, Jim. Appreciate you very much. Yeah. Oh, we're going to get to that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's very kind. Okay, so... In the, the uh, secret life, thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Yeah. In the secret life, we now have a domestic uh, approximately uh, four months into the relationship. And as a result of that, the, the PD gets there and uh, the victim, Rose, reports that he, uh, the husband, CL, put her in a uh, headlock and slams her uh, to the ground. Uh, how, however, later on, 
uh, they reconcile and kind of smooth everything out uh, and there are no more issues. Uh, and somehow uh, the petition of the domestic uh, disturbance uh, gets withdrawn and pulled uh, from the court system. Okay. So uh, as a result of that, okay, um, there are no um, DV charges, but later on we'll find out that she actually had a bench warrant. Okay. Well, what one of the interesting things here is, do, um, and I want to ask you guys, Okay. Doesn't that sound familiar? Uh, doesn't that sound like uh, we saw a press conference uh, where somebody said, you know, well, she's apologized and uh, everything is, um, you know, getting pulled back. Yeah. Right. So shortly after this event, uh, the husband uh, files for a divorce, and uh, according to him, statements in the public, uh, Rose talks him out of it. Okay. So he wants out of the relationship. She wants to stay in the relationship. Okay. So now, what I need, what we need to do in a, in a scenario like that is in our board back here, we want to put that up as a huge, huge red flag because you have two people in a domestic, the, you know, five O has been called okay, or Popo for those of you uh, who get that street vernacular, a five O is the PD and so is the Popo. Okay. And I use those, you know, just as a, uh, little little fun here okay so the the popo gets called uh and you know everything just starts um going you know hunky dory okay after they they all get away okay. so she then gets an active bench warrant though and now everybody has to understand right i mean we know how it works in the system. So she is declaring that he got her in a headlock and slammed her uh, into the, you know, concrete. And then he's claiming that, uh, no, it's all a misunderstanding. And, you know, she's pulled everything back and it's all good. But apparently she gets a bench warrant for disorderly conduct. Uh, which was later amended uh, for to domestic for a domestic. So it's unclear it, to me anyway if you know how her charge was related uh, to this domestic incident. Um, if if it's a disorderly conduct uh, bench warrant. So if anybody you know has any insight into that, I would love to see. Uh, you know, what your thoughts are uh, on that, you know, uh, punch it into the, the chat over here so I can uh, take a look at it. Now, it's a misdemeanor. So in California, that would be a felony. If it's a DV, uh, it's actually 273.5 is the penal code section. Uh, and quite frankly, they're in a, they're, they're in a, hey, and we, we saw, you know, our friends, you know, recently that were on the channel when uh, they're in California, there is no choice. Uh, the officers uh, have no choice but to hook people up and uh, take them to jail. Okay. So uh, back then in 2009, those those laws may not have been enact, enacted in Wisconsin, uh, and they still had discretion. So anyway, uh, a, a bench warrant is out in 2009. She pleads guilty to the misdemeanor uh, domestic violence. Uh, assault charge in court, according to records. So she may have been the aggressor uh, at that time. And as a result of that, okay, um, she may have been trying to dance her way around uh, the relationship 
And he uh, was trying to maybe position himself as the victim. Uh, I'm not clear how that works yet in this particular case, because only one of the two is missing and has been missing for quite some time now. So according to news reports, uh, on August 9th, the night she disappeared, uh, CL said uh, she left home while they, after dinner uh, with him and his dad. And he was the la- they were the last two people to see her uh, alive. Okay. So, D-Man, I want to show you what's up uh, from the Sheriff's Department that was produced uh, by the Sheriff's Department. And let's go ahead and play that uh, uh, video, D. Yep, okay. So... Get over here. Tucked away in the rolling hills and dense forests of northwest Wisconsin is a landscape so beautiful you'd swear it was taken directly from a painting. But if you look close enough, there is a dark cloud lingering in the distance. A secret that these roads have held on to for far too long. A secret that has haunted Candace Terror in this community for ten long years. And it's just, it's horrible. It's hard to deal with, very hard to deal with. And my life will never be normal without knowing where my daughter is. On August 21st, 2009, Rose Marie Bly left her residence in St. Croix Falls, Wisconsin, believed to be en route to Cushing, just a short six-mile drive to the east. The 21-year-old mother of two never made it. Days later, Bly's 2001 Pontiac Grand Am was found in the village of Grantsburg, nearly 17 miles north of her house, with no explanation as to how it got there. No one has seen or heard from her since. There hasn't been a day that has gone by when Candace Hare hasn't wondered where her youngest daughter is, or if she's okay. With a missing child, it's there's a hole in your heart that can't be filled. And it's just, it's an impossible journey every day. Okay, so let's stop right here for a second, shall we? All right. I definitely know what that feels like. Uh, Those of you who are new to our channel um, and those of you who know us, uh, we are survivors of a, uh, a son who passed away in 2003. Okay. Um, And, you know, as a result of that, I know what that word means. Uh, You know, a hole in your heart. All right. Uh, So I'm going to, you know, just ask right now, I'm looking at the chat and again, people are coming in here. Uh, I don't know what's going on over there, but you know, guys, you know, again, I want to stay focused on summer and not other creators. Okay. I love, I love everybody. At least I try to, uh, but this is my chat. So please stop. Uh, if you're a supporter of another person, that's okay, but don't put it in my chat and a story. Okay. And a story. Okay. That said in, in this particular situation, all right. In this situation, we have a mother, i.e. Candace, his mother, Candace's mother, saying that she's lost a daughter. Then we have Candace saying that she's lost a daughter. So we have Grandis, who's grandma, and we have Candace, Summer's mom, saying they both understand what it feels like to lose a daughter now. And I don't know about you, but I, I've got to stop for a second. Um, you know, I've got to stop for a second and think, okay, what, what are the odds of, of two moms in the same family 
losing their daughters. Okay. Well, and so we take a look at what that means. Okay. We take them, we take a look at what that means. And what that means is we start looking at the victim continuum. Okay. Uh, and, and thank you, Bobby cat. Grateful. If we look at the victim continuum again, now in summer's case, again, five-year-olds just don't vanish. Okay. In Rose's case, she could vanish. But then you have to then start look at looking at what's the environment, situation, and circumstance. Okay. So as we start to look into the family dynamics on both plays, i.e. both scenarios, okay, we can understand why that uh, law enforcement is keeping it close, close to the vest. There is uh, generational stuff going on here. And I think we all know, you know, some of the players uh, around, you know, the circle here, you know, and as a result of that, I don't, I cannot tonight, uh, and we will be focusing on, you know, the correlating factors here in the secret life. Okay. I cannot tonight though, uh, honestly say that it, um, you know, the two of them are, are connected yet. Okay. Not yet. It's way, way, way too ear, uh, too early criminal behavior. Uh, you know, potentially, uh, allegedly, in my opinion, uh, you know, you've got you've got all the the making for you know a very high risk environment for Rose. Uh, just in just in some of the circles around uh, this person. So uh, let's continue on, shall we? And um, this was the wedding, by the way. This was her wedding. Uh, and these are the family members uh, that came, that showed up, friends and family. Okay, so let's keep moving. To wake up and wonder where she is. Just trying to figure out where my daughter is. It's just, it's horrible. It's, it's not a good feeling. I'm trying it's to figure just, out who the guy is in the back seat behind her. She was. My name is Brent Walk, and I'm the Polk County Sheriff. When Rose Bly went missing, Brent Walk was a patrol sergeant with the Polk County Sheriff's Department. Now Sheriff Walk and his office have made finding Bly a top priority. To date, the Sheriff's Department has investigated more than 200 tips and have interviewed more than 150 people. Still, the same question remains. Where is Rose Bly? Well, I sympathize with uh, the family of Rose because um, they want to know the answers much like we do. And when these answers are, are, are largely um, unknown, that's very difficult to deal with when you, when you have to. Okay, let's stop there for a second, shall we? Now think about this. Did everybody just hear what he said? Uh, I mean, if we were to take Sheriff Lawson and, and Sheriff Wack and put them in the same room, uh, we just had the exact same press conference. I mean, what are the odds of that when, you know, you have this guy uh, in Wisconsin saying, well, you know, they, uh, they want to know, and uh, we want to know. And this is, I mean, if we thought about that for a second in our public persona, you have the sheriff in Hawkins County saying, well, we'd like to know. Uh, and, you know, we don't know right now. And you have this guy in Wisconsin dealing with the same family saying, well, we, we'd we like to know and we don't know right now. Uh, and that's why we have we have a, a shift here in, in uh, a focus. We're going to try to, you know, put this out on, on social media. Well, they're successful. Uh, you're in the interview room. And we hope we can help you. Uh, and I'm hoping that uh, this will kick something loose uh, whereby we can find a correlation to not only helping with Rose, but finding this sweet little five-year-old little girl 
who has vanished off the face of the earth. Okay. So uh, I just thought that was really interesting because I, you know, if we were really were to take a look at it, uh, both sheriffs basically said the exact same thing. Um, keep questioning what happened to Rose and, and where did she go? And certainly that is the solution we're looking for. We want to bring closure to this. 10 years, a decade, that's a lot of time. And you just look at what's changed in our lives and our careers, yet alone this case is still out there. And you know, we would like to bring conclusion to it. 10 years. I tried to avoid this area. Okay, stop. I'm going to stop that for a second. Yeah. All right. Put that on the red flag train. That is, in my opinion, and it's strictly my opinion, huge. Uh, why do I say that? Why do you, well, what, what do you think? What do you think? Uh, go ahead and throw it up in chat here for a second. I want to get some of your insight. She goes, I try to stay away from this area. Yeah, exactly, Danielle. All right. Moms, all you moms, grandmas, sisters, aunts, all you, all of our women here, uh, and thank you, in, um, in our TIR family. Isn't this the place you would want to go if this was the area your, your daughter, your child could be in? Okay, so one of the things... I'm going to point out here is this is a behavior that is consistent and can be taught. Now, where am I going with that? I try to avoid this area. Yeah, the dads do count. Sorry about that. Yeah, you dads, you you guys all count too, um, right? You know, love you guys as well. You know. Anyway, this idea, this idea, mom, summer's missing. All right. Well, guys, this video is there is a ton of information in this video that the sheriff's department produced. And I think the guy in the back seat was one of the investigators. Uh, I'm not, I don't know who it is, not yet. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna certainly ask, okay. But I think the dude uh, in the back seat is listening to what we call spontaneous statements. Now, I don't think at this point the two cases are related. I think from one case to the next, they've learned some things that could be applied into case number two. And that's just my opinion right now. Because we're going to see some additional things taking place uh, that you know, are pretty interesting. So I'm going to back this up for a second and play this again. Listen to this again. Conclusion to it. 10 years. I tried to avoid this area. And I can't. It just draws me back. And I don't years of worry and wondering a full decade rose all right so now i'm going to give you a little insight into what that feels like as a parent when our when ryan died 
uh, September 3rd, 2003 in Southern California, Karen and I were at Disney Disneyland when my cell phone rang and it was law enforcement. And I remember the moment life just, everything slowed down and life changed. And those of you who understand, you understand. Okay, and those all of us understand. We all have a Gethsemane in our life. Okay. I had to go back and face that piece of the puzzle. I I I was standing right by the teacups when that phone rang, and I knew in my heart at some point I had to go back and stand there again if i was to continue to heal uh after his law after his death so when uh, what struck me was she's 10 years later and either a she hasn't faced it or b there's more to this there's more to this uh because I don't see a whole lot of action in relationship to how in the world she has been out there uh, searching. Now, we're going to find out next week some more. We've got some other interviews that we're doing. But I don't know. I don't know yet what that that means. I put it up as a red flag. Uh, not only coming from a parent's position of, you know, a, a child, you know, uh, somebody who's lost a child, but at the same time from an investigator's position of, well, wait a minute, this is the area where you would want to go and start looking for your child. So that inaction in of itself is is a correlating action to a public persona of I'm really not doing anything, but I'm saying I am. Okay. And if we look at that in relationship to the last six months, uh, we may see something that is pretty obvious. Just saying, what do you think? As children have had to spend without their mother. Someone knows something. Someone has the key. Everyone agrees it's time for this mystery to be solved. It's time for Rose to come home. Not sure which way, but she's out there somewhere. It's hard not to cry. Even just out here looking, it just brings tears to her eyes, not knowing, wondering what actually really happened that day. Those of you here out there, I still have the same number. Just, I want to bring her home. Okay, so there we have the sheriff's uh, produced video. Um, so as a result of that, uh, that, that last uh, cut there where we see her walking down the road, you know, with a walking stick, you know, looking for, you know, her daughter. Okay. Um, Yet her daughter was in a car, allegedly, 30 some odd miles, you know, down the road. Uh, it's, it, uh, it didn't fit, it, it didn't fit the narrative. Uh, and the one thing you want to do, you know, quite frankly, in, in law enforcement is make sure that you're uh, correlating the story to the facts of the case. And okay, so uh, I would have changed that, quite frankly if I was the case agent, uh, because it doesn't correlate. It just doesn't correlate. All right. So that said, so going back to 
the car. All right, her car is found 30 some odd miles away. And it's in an area, uh, according to law enforcement uh, reports and uh, public reports right now, it's in an area where uh, there is, you know, a large uh, presence of truck drivers. Okay. Uh, and it was a parking lot, you know, that apparently had a lot of transient activity, according to um, all projected sources. Well, I think that in of itself could be uh, very interesting that it could be something that um, is a red herring. That her car, in of itself, a, a suspect, again, looking at the suspectology. Okay, Huda, what do you have here? Uh, found a car four days later. Sounds like it was planted. Yeah, that and this uh, great thought. This is so. This is where uh, I want to. I want to dive into that thought process a little bit deeper, Huda. Okay, and thank you for that. So think about this. Why plant a car hypothetically? If if this is a uh, um, plant, there where. Why put it in an area with such high transient traffic? Uh, Jan, uh, love what you're doing. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I, you're good. You're good. Aloha. Thank you. So um, make it look like Rose left. Yeah. Well, and now I don't, we don't know if it's CL. We don't know, you know, who could have done that. However, this is why it throws a whole bunch of red flags up into the air. A couple of things. Number one, all right, if she left the car there, let's use that as a as a theory. She leaves the car and she gets in, you know, somebody else's car. Well, that's a high risk activity. And so she's a victim of opportunity at that point. And that's where the stranger abduction theory uh, would come in. Now, obviously, we know in summer, uh, I'm not buying that one uh, for summer. Uh, not yet. Is it a possibility? It's still on the table, but the other three uh, are much stronger. Somebody had access to that property uh, is my number one. Or, you know, it's an accident of some sort with other with another play right behind it. But in this situation where you have her car found, okay, well, first of all, the suspect wants you to find it. That's the first thing. So then you have to ask yourself, okay, why take the car 30 miles and just drop it off? What is the second access point out of that environment for the suspect? Either A, you need two people, somebody to follow you to drop the car off and then give you a ride back or a ride out, or the victim drops the car off and takes the keys because the keys haven't been found and gets in a, you know, a trucker's truck and they, they disappear. And, you know, she finds, you know, Ben Rhodes for lack of a better term. Okay. Well, in this kind of scenario, you know, I think we can all agree that that's, that just doesn't line, you know, it, it, those ty types of situations, you know, a random abduction like this, um, again, they would be very, very, very rare in 2009. So you now have a family who is, has experienced a loved one disappear, absolutely 100% disappear. Okay. So she plans allegedly, according to her, Hus her husband, CL, and remember, his father is there. We've not heard much about his father. Uh, I'm going to look into that a little bit deeper to find out what, what circle of influence is in that uh, room that night. 
And she leaves to go visit allegedly her cousin uh, at a local bar. But later her cousin says, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, she doesn't have any recollection recollection of that, according to reports. And so apparently she kind of foo foos the 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 drink story that they were going to meet up, and they were going to meet up, you know, fifteen minutes from her house. Yet the car is found uh, another fifteen minutes from that meetup spot, so thirty miles away. So. That in and of itself sounds kind of, you know, strange. Was so the cousins like, well, wait a minute. I don't see that happening. Okay. So that's flag number, you know, two so far. I think we've got a couple going here. Now, could she have been cheating? Um, yeah, of course. She could have been. Uh, however, that that relationship had, you know, turned into a mystery that is now, you know, from 2009 to today, uh, still under investigation. And we also now correlate that to a second family member, uh, a five-year-old little girl who just vanishes out of a basement of a house at 110 Ben Hill Road in Kingsport, Tennessee. Um, pretty interesting. Not saying they're related. Not yet. I don't have any evidence of that personally. So I'm not going to go down there. The last reported contact she made was to her husband telling him she'll be home around midnight. This is according to the husband. So apparently she makes contact with the husband and says, I'll be home at midnight. Uh, so she's supposed to be out with uh, her cousin at this point if that was to line up because you would think the husband would say, you know, well, you know, where are you? And, and are you having a good time with your cousin that you were going to meet for drinks? Okay. So that's a mysterious, you know, crack in, in the problem here. Okay. A crack. So the, the FBI has issued a wanted persons uh, bulletin about her. And I'm going to put that up here real fast. Okay. And, you know, they lay out, you know, all of her, uh, what we used to call her horsepower, right? All the particulars, height, weight, uh, you know, no DOB on here, but, you know, all of the markers, you know, tattoos, et cetera. And that way, you know, if, if any of this, and it goes through VICAP, by the way, you can see that up in the right-hand corner, uh, Violent Criminal Apprehension Program, uh, Cooper Greg Cooper ran that program for the FBI. Actually, he developed it. Uh, so when you when you see Coop uh, on uh, the channel here, uh, thank him because that is his work uh, up there. Um, what happened in the house before Rose left? Yeah, yeah. Or did she leave the house? Uh, one of the things that has struck me uh, about this particular case is I don't know how many search warrants they've done. They've talked about 200 leads and tips that have come in, but in a missing persons case like this with suspicious circumstances, the, what you want to do is you want to go back to the house uh, where she was last seen. And you want to uh, hit that house with a search warrant. So I don't know if that was done. If anybody knows if that was done, uh, please let me know. We're talking to some people next week, and I'll have that answer on the next follow-up uh, to this case. Um, but uh, Sheriff Lawson, what did I say, Larson? I'm sorry. Thank you, Mama She. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I don't know, uh, if there have been any search warrants in the house, I'm assuming the car was hit pretty cleanly. And if the, if the car was in the husband's name, then he could have given consent uh, to search the house or the car and the house. 
So if he was on any of those leases that, um, you know, at that time, then maybe that's why they haven't gotten search warrants. But that would be really interesting. And to cover yourself, just to make sure, uh, you would want to do a search warrant anyway and and hit that house. Because uh, you would want to, you know, you'd want to shoot luminol or and use an ALS, which is an alternate light source, uh, through that, you know, through that room, through the rooms in that house. Um, and if so, you know, you, you, you could come up with some, you know, evidence that could lead you down uh, a different path. You know, Corporal Deb, if the house was not searched, why? Yeah, that is a great question. I have the same question. Uh, if, if it wasn't searched, in, in my opinion, that would have been a huge mistake, huge mistake. And, you know, I had a case, uh, you know, just reflecting on a missing mom. Her name was Rebecca Ann Jensen. Uh, and I shared that before. Uh, we went back and the first thing I did was search her house. Okay. Even though she disappeared driving a car. And later we found her, her body. Uh, so within three weeks of her uh, disappearance, her husband uh, then files for divorce. Okay. So you now, or you now, excuse me, within six months, uh, of her disappearance, her husband of six months files for a divorce. Okay. Uh, and he requested a court order to ensure, uh, Rose could not return and gain custody of their children. So the children was, seems to be a pivotal, um, piece of this puzzle for the husband. Remember, he wants out of the relationship. She allegedly talks him back into the relationship, but he wants custody of the children in case she comes back. So he files divorce and says, you know, I need to get custody of these kids. So let's add that to the red flag column, shall we? Let's see some red flags in this one. All right. So now, in 2010, he was granted sole custody of their daughters. And according to reports uh, of her friends uh, and one of her best friends from high school, uh, that Ro help find Rose, uh, the, the group, the Facebook group, and I have not seen it, and I, I'm not part of it, and I, I don't do that. I don't get into that. Uh, I, I like to, you know, stay neutral. Uh, the, and Rose said her husband told her that uh, if he ever, that if she ever left, she would never, ever take the girls. Okay. Another, another, you know, problem in terms of the the relationship in of itself now he's probably a great dad i know he's still up in the area and you know he's got custody of the girls and they're older and i'm hoping at some point he'll talk to me and uh, we can get a little better uh understanding of uh what the conditions were that evening um so if anybody knows him uh have him reach out i'd love to to talk to him and see if we can correlate uh, some things. Um, so according to some of the reports at the time, uh, samples were taken uh, of DNA from her 2001 Pontiac, uh, but they weren't definitive enough to generate a person of interest. Um, so that in of itself uh, is not unusual. I mean, we're dealing with that obviously, in uh, the Suzanne Morphew case, where, you know, there's partial uh, DNA uh, belonging to a group of RSOs. And, you know, it's anybody's guess. Uh, the, the reality is they're not, it's not a 100% match to anyone. And therefore, it's just smoke and mirrors uh, by the defense counsel. And also over there, of course, you know, the cops are now on trial, right? Uh, not, not the guy, 
you know, who, whose wife is also missing to this. Is there a life insurance policy? Uh, I don't have that answer yet, uh, Corporal and Deb. I don't have that answer yet. But yes, that would be definitely an avenue we want to take a look at, right, for, for MO to see what's going on. So on the 10th anniversary, the sheriff, uh, Brent Wack, uh, issues uh, a statement that this has now become an active investigation. Well, you know, that was a couple of years ago to regenerate the conversation and stimulate pe uh, people's memories of the case. Well, you know, the TIR is going to help you. Uh, Sheriff, we, we want to help you find Rose Bly. And all of our uh, folks here, uh, we've got some really smart people in the true crime community. Uh, so pay attention to some of the, um, you know, social media. And if we can, you know, be of assistance in any way, shape or form, uh, we certainly will stick to the facts and uh, put information out that you would want uh, put out into the environment. Uh, prior to her disappearance, though, uh, one interesting tidbit. Rose tells her mom, Candace, Grandis, Grandis, that she fell off a horse and was experiencing pain. And Grandis grabbed that later on and interjected that into her story that maybe she suffered from brain damage and wandered off on her own. All right. But the cops said there's, there's no evidence of that theory. Okay. Uh, Grandish. Uh, call coming in. Okay, hang on for a minute. All right. This is, that one deserves this. Hang on. Okay. Call coming in. Uh, your daughter's car was found 30 miles away. Okay. 30 miles away. Okay. Um, wandering off. You know what? If, if we look at some of the correlations to, well, what happened to summer? I think one of the comments was she could have wandered off. And that in of itself is another, another red flag. Okay. And I'm, I didn't answer that last question because even if I knew, I, I'm not going to put it over YouTube. Okay. But I appreciate the question and the, the donation. Thank you. I appreciate you. Touch DNA would be a new tech. Yes, exactly. Lisa. Touch DNA would be good, and, and Francine would be fantastic. The Bardol method of Touch DNA, uh, if you have not seen her interview, uh, go, go check it out. It's in the uh, playlist. Uh, go see how she took off Touch DNA from um, shell casings. And rocks, by the way, and rocks, okay? So, that said, they, the, the, the idea now, okay, we have a very, she's kind of a medium to high risk victim because she left the house. And according to the husband, we don't know, I don't know if he is able to say, um, you know, he gave the, the PD. Uh, permission to search the house. Okay. Uh, and so now we correlate that. What are the odds that she 
Grandish is in Tennessee the day her granddaughter just disappeared, just evaporates. And then, for some reason, she evaporated. Wow. So here's a here's a a request. Miss Hare, I would love to talk to you on the interview room. We can even record it. So I know you're looking for your daughter and I know you're looking for your granddaughter. I hope that you accept my invitation to come and speak with me about summer, that day summer disappeared and the day you heard about Rose's disappearance. I would love your insight into anything you feel could correlate um, to not only Summer's case, but in of itself, uh, your daughter's case. Because, you know, you, I know, have got to be thinking about some of the things that took place in both of these. Both of them. Now, I take it if, you know, you don't want to talk about it, then at at least contact me. I'm easy to get hold of. You can send me an email. And I'd love to speak to you. And and I'll give you a kind of a, a quick breakdown. The, the, the confusion that I'm having is some folks are saying that you know a lot more, but you're not, you don't want to talk about it. Okay? No problem. I'm confused about the timeline. I'm confused what you did after summer went missing i see what you did with rose's case you you know they depict you walking down the road with a with a cane or a walking stick like you're looking for her and i understand that and i would do the exact same thing but i've not seen that walking stick in summer's case it would be interesting to see if you would be willing and I will come up to Wisconsin to talk to you if necessary to talk with me about it because I think like you, you and of it, you probably would like to get some answers as to what happened that day with summer. I know you want to help the sheriff, the FBI, TBI, but more importantly, your daughter. Because you understand what she's experiencing. And silence is the opposite of that understanding. I would ask you to please consider my invitation. And hopefully we can, you know, try to figure things out together. I will even bring the the resources that um, I can muster to the table for you okay? without interfering in any way, shape, or form any active investigation by the good agencies who are working on it. Okay? So this is a standing open invitation uh, for you. Okay? All right. So if you're new with us, you've just joined us, um, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you're if you've not subscribed, and we've got another piece of this coming. Um, that uh, you know, my Karen, my sweetheart, you know, the investigative uh, expert as she is, you know, she's she's been an investigative journalist for well over thirty years, and boy, she's done some 
amazing stuff. You could, you know, trust me behind the scenes. Granis, please help bring the girls home. Thank you, Lisa. That's right. So let's see. Oh, oh, by the way, you know, remember the three uh, prison terms on um, what's his name? Don uh, DW. Yeah. You know, one of those prison terms was for uh, robbing a convenience store with a gun. You know, you know, I, I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. You know how, you know, whether or not, you know, that's, you know, a different part of the story, but um, everybody that I talk to today uh, sends their best um, that um, to everybody in not only the true crime community, uh, but, uh, you know, to the TIR community uh, about Jeannie, about Mary and uh, the other uh, victims and survivors. They send their best to everybody. But, uh, the, you know, we're not talking about just somebody that, you know, just had problems. No, we're talking about three se separate prisons with a rap sheet uh, that, you know, I could probably go as a mummy next year for Halloween. Okay. So I want to know where you're at, where you're, where you're watching from tonight. So I want to jump right into a little more music to kind of move us up here. Show me where you are. And then we're going to take some questions. Uh, so here we go. And <laughs> wrong one. I messed my board up. All right, here we go. Ohio, Clinton, Tennessee, Scotland, love it, South Oregon, Amy from Kentucky, Corporal Dev, Australia, top of the morning, Karen, Central Florida, Coastal New York, North Carolina, small town girl, Pennsylvania, North Texas, Welcome Horn, Cindy, Ottawa, Canada. Harmonic Balance, Mississippi, Gulf Coast House, love it. Alice in West Tennessee, Scotland, Margaret, thank you for being here, everybody. Lisa, Massachusetts, Taxachusetts. Serendipitous Sherry, Charlottesville, Virginia. Crystal Angel, Ohio. Carl and Five, Aloha from Chicago, the Windy City. Betty Gaines, Jemison, Alabama. Robin, North Carolina. Yep. Brown Mills, New Jersey. Roe. Monica Speaks, Northwest Arkansas. Yep, another Maria. Canada. Get your questions ready. Silly me, Tucson, Arizona. Road less traveled, the coast of South Carolina. Hopefully near Charleston. The Low Country, San Antonio, Sarah. Great to see everybody tonight and welcome Denmark. Thank you so much for being here and staying up so late. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Okay, so we've got, uh, let's see where folks chime in here with a couple of uh, questions. And um, we'll see what we can uh, come up with collectively. Ontario, San Antonio, California, upstate New York, Michigan, uh, Virginia. Man, thank you guys so very much. We sure love you guys and appreciate you very, very much. And the fact that you're keeping it classy. Uh, man, kill devil. Hills, North Carolina. I love it. I love it. Whoops. I uh, love the soundboard. <laughs> I know, right? Yes, I know. Teresa, thank you. I, I, this little doohickey here is absolutely fantastic. I love it. Uh, it reminds me of the prices, right? <laughs> I know, right? Pick a door, pick a door. Oh, Hey, we could do that. Pick a door is Grandest behind one, two, or th no, I don't want to say that. Uh, I don't want to put any numbers up in there. You know, you never know. I'm learning some, some stuff. Denmark was the video with grandest made. Yes. That was made by the sheriff's department to raise awareness. Well, when 2019, three years ago, 2019. Thank you. What does Rose cousin say about that night? Uh, they say, that cousin says, nope, it wasn't uh, planned. We were not going to meet at all. Okay. Uh, yes, you want to talk about CCF? T 
tea time. <clears throat> CCF is a 501c3. Uh, there's about 125 folks, uh, all professional of a whole variety of, uh, um, you know, experiences, levels of uh, um, resources uh, from scientists. We have DNA access. Uh, we, we have a lot of people. John Douglas, uh, the mine hunter, was our executive director and is now is Coop, uh, has uh, the job. And um, if you get a chance, go to uh, coldcasefoundation.org. You can join uh, Cold Case Live and uh, become part of the, part of the solution. Uh, we absolutely love you guys, and we're grateful uh, tonight for our mods. We have, you know, 7,200 people in here uh, on a chat, and these are folks, Miss Sophia, Maui Girl, Mimi J2, Four Sons Mom, Sophie H., and Stephanie Herb are working overtime and but you are keeping it classy just as we asked thank you so very much uh for for just by the way you're handling it handling it. where's grandma living now uh jim great question heard different things i've heard she's back i've heard she's gone like you um i do not know exactly where she's at but my gut tells me she's back in wisconsin I don't think she's up on the hill. Have you talked to Dr. Phil and the behavior panel guys? I have not. I have not talked to them. I'm glad they, hey, they weighed in, uh, and we'll wait to see how that unfolds. Okay. That was a great question. Thank you, Roxanne. Where was DW living when Rose went missing? I've heard different things. Uh, my best recollection is he may have been in Arkansas uh, at the time. Arkansas love to the mods. Yes, I agree. Was there ever evidence proof that Rose actually fell off a horse to your knowledge? The mystery Maven. Uh, and by the way, you are really smart. I know you're an attorney. I love it. Uh, was there ever any, no, there wasn't. Uh, this was interjected into the conversation. So I think, uh, counselor, you will find that pretty fascinating and thank you for being here. Do you know where H is? Uh, I have an idea. I have an idea. And it's um, a little bit north. Okay. Uh, when will we hear if Utah is going to prosecute? They are working their tails off uh, because there have been more people that came uh, forward. Uh, and so they are still getting uh, affidavits of what took place. So it's still moving. Once it's done, i.e. the dust settles, we'll see what they do. How old was Candace when this happened? Uh, so there's an eight year uh, difference uh, between the two girls. Uh, so she was eight years older uh, than Rose. Okay. <clears throat> Next. Is the rumor about a family rumor around the time of the disappearance true? I have not heard that uh, rumor. I do not know that answer. And if it's a rumor, uh, we want to verify it uh, before we put it out as uh, fact, right? Uh, SM Lab Rat. Thank you. Number 99. Wayne Gretzky's old number for our Canadian friends up there in on, uh, Edmonton. The lab, Chris, you need to put sticky notes on your sound port so you don't hit the wrong one. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, Josh. I know, right? And uh, go hit his stuff up over there. He did something on Grandis this week. Lisa Black, can volunteers comb area that Grandis tries to avoid? Call the local sheriff's department up there. Call uh, Sheriff Wack um, and see what he says. See what he says. Was the shred ever fully investigated? Was the shed ever fully investigated? Corporal Deb, uh, according to the sheriff and others, that shed was uh, fully investigated. Yes, up on the property. I was not allowed to see it, but it was. Uh, which you know brings to that shed. Hang on to this question for a second, Dill. 
uh, interesting thought was every time there was stress uh, and money was an issue, items would be sold or pawned. And you'll notice that sometimes uh, there was a report of people coming up and stealing items uh, off the property. I don't know what that means, okay? but I find it correlating and interesting. Uh, just saying. What about Allie's input from the uh, this from your interview? Yeah. No, she, uh, what about H, right? He said she's 5150. Okay. But that's his opinion. I've not met her. Okay. I've not met her. And he even, you know, the poor kid, you know, when he said that, he compared it to his grandma, you know, who was a firecracker at the table. Let me tell you. Um, it, was a, it was a good day. Dancing Queen. How can TBI know nothing about tips and work done? They know a lot about tips and work being done. Uh, sometimes, you know, you you come from the left when everybody's looking at the right. So I think they're doing a fantastic job, I have to tell you. I really do. TBI, FBI, the card team, I mean, those guys and gals, I mean, they're some of the best in the business uh, around. And um, got to love them. Absolutely have to love them. All right. So we uh, can we please rule out Robin? Yes, please rule out Robin, somebody. You know, Jeanette, uh, Robin is not involved in this. Uh, Miss Robin, uh, I will tell you that from my personal opinion. Uh, if I was investigating this case, uh, I would tell you right now, you know, take her off the list. Robin's not involved. You know, she's not involved. That's my opinion. Okay. And if you get a chance, would you get a, go over and watch the interview with her? She's, she is uh, a really delightful soul. Uh, and she really did and does love summer. Um, and you can bet that woman was heartbroken, was, was heartbroken. What do you think happened? Uh, Sherry says, what do I think happened, uh, to Rose? Well, at this point, um, I don't know yet outside of, she's definitely, uh, not with us. Um, and could foul play be in, uh, the, the realm of possibility? Uh, most definitely, obviously, uh, doesn't, you know, doesn't take much to say other than that. Um, do I think her life was taken, uh, and, you know, the demise, I don't think she walked away and I think the domestic stuff is problematic. Okay. Is problematic. Okay. And, um, so at this point I would put her in the category of you know um she could be a victim of foul play for sure uh and she's just uh, my opinion she's not with us you know um thank you thank you Jeanette yeah absolutely I mean Miss Robin is you know uh I remember I sat with her shortly thereafter summer's disappearance and she she's not in, she's not involved at all okay so let's take that off the plate um, okay. What else do we have, Dill? Um, all right. Whoop. Did someone else drive Rose and left? Yes. That is a high probability. I would lean that way. I think the car could be a staged incident. I think the car could be problematic, could be problematic for the suspect. Because at this point, uh, it, now we, if we were approached by the sheriff or Grandis, we could get involved in Rose's case from, and we could hit the ground running with about 125 folks, uh, top to bottom. And we have some conversations taking place next week. Uh, I'll keep you posted. Okay. Uh, did Grandis take a lie detector test? I just saw that one. Where did that go? Uh, in Summer's case. I don't, I don't have that answer. Uh, I, I do know the two lie detector tests 
the first one that was administered, uh, and you can hear uh, the answer to that question uh, from Candace herself. Uh, when I was up on her, up on the property, I asked her that specifically, tell me about these lie detector tests. And so she said, you know, she took them and I've heard 50, 50 on the results and you can listen to it yourself. It came right from her mouth, not mine. Chris will be taking this on the great men and women of the of our TRF. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Yeah. Well, well, let's see where, let's see where the sheriff goes. Uh, sheriff. Why I talked to the lead investigator about two weeks ago and, um, you know, he was going to circle back with me, but we have not reconnected. I'll call, uh, I'll call Rose is missing. How long was she missing before that call was made? Uh, I think it was shortly thereafter, uh, that, uh, you know, they put her up on NamUs. Uh, and then the feds got involved and, and punched out the bulletin from VICAP. And what happens with VICAP, uh, <clears throat> so everybody knows, uh, so whenever you have a suspicious situation like Rose's case, uh, not Summer's case, because Summer's case, you get boots on the ground, like quick. And that's where the card team came in. And, and you know, Sheriff Lawson, you know, to, to his credit, and TBI with Dave Roush up there in the FBI, uh, they pulled those guys in like quick. But what happens in the VICAP is the agency reports it uh, through NCIC, the National Crime Information Center. So there's this teletype, this bulletin goes in, the records, you know, punches it in, all the stats, what we what we call the horsepower, right? All the information in relationship to the victim. Okay? And then from there, the investigators asked to fill out a VICAP form and they put in all of the correlating information in relationship to their case. And then that information is uploaded uh, into the VICAP program. And what the um, program does, and you know, there's also some other things, AI and a variety of other things that look for correlation uh, to cases all around the United States and North America anyway. And the, the system then kicks out, you know, Hey, you may need to call this agency because they have something, you know, similar, or they have a Jane Doe or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So all of that information is put out, uh, quickly. And then it comes back. Thank you. Holidays. Uh, it comes back to the reporting agency, with potential contacts of other agencies. It, the program was initially put together for serial uh, offenders, serial killers. And there are certain categories that you can check that will get it uh, right to the top of the heap uh, pretty quickly. And, you know, in this case, it sounds like it was just a, a standard VICAP, hey, missing person, uh, mother of two, et cetera. So boots on the ground, uh, in this type of case is critical. Uh, and you have to add, add, you have to ask the hard questions from the get go and you have to answer, or excuse me, you have to ask everybody in the circle, you know, including the father-in-law who was there as one of the last two people to see her. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be, um, I, I would really like to talk to the father-in-law, I don't, uh, my gut tells me he's not, uh, you know, with us anymore because it's been over 10 years okay? and, you know, he could be, I hope he is, uh, because he would be one of the first guys I would start with, you know, to see what he has to say. And you have to do it, you know, separately, right. You want to do it out of the, uh, the earshot of every other fam family member, you know, thank you. Guess who? And Lisbeth Burke, welcome to the family. Great to have you. It's great to have you. All right. So we've got a lot, a couple of things coming. Uh, I'm uh, putting together uh, uh, Wesley Allen Dodd. Uh, I've been going through some of the video. Uh, if, for those of you that don't know, he was a serial child killer. Uh, I was the second to the last interview with him in 1992. 
before he was on uh, death row in Walla Walla State Prison. Uh, I'm the, he was uh, really kind of he was a nut job, right? And um, has anyone given the X uh, lie detector test? Uh, Judy, I don't know that uh, yet, uh, but that is on my list to ask uh, this week. So hopefully next time, and thank you for that donation. The next time I'm going to have that answer for you. Okay. So, you know, hold on to that. Okay. We'll go five. <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, with, uh, with Dodd, um, I was the second to the last guy to uh, speak with him before uh, he was executed in Walla Walla state prison in, um, you know, Washington state. And so I have that interview that I've been uh, putting together and hopefully we're going to get that out. And uh, first, I'm going to release it uh, to my members uh, because, you know, you're members. <laughs> and so I, I need to do that. Also, I'm going to have a members only live stream coming up. Uh, so I want to give you a heads up on that. And uh, I just also want to tell you uh, how much we are grateful for everything um, that you have given us as a family. You, uh, we feel so, so blessed and so humbled by the fact that uh, you continue to be with us. And I mean, so people have even, uh, I've heard that people are spoofing all kinds of my stuff. And by the way, I don't have a Twitter account. FYI, if you see anything out there, that's not me. Uh, I have nothing to do with any of that So I don't know. Uh, and what was my position? Uh, I, was an, I was a detective. I spent 13 years in homicide and 25 years on the job. Hey, and in that time in Southern California, we had a lot of volume. Uh, and I am currently the director of law enforcement relationships for the Cold Case Foundation, uh, which is a 501c3 supporting um, you know, families all around the country of missing persons, active homicide cases, working with agencies, and a variety of other things. So anyway, thoughts on Dotson? What is this? Dotson AWP told Summer not in the water. Um, you know, I talked to Jared uh, about that, and um, he, we, you know, we're still chatting. So let's see. But the sheriff's, or excuse me, the sheriff's department sent dive teams uh, into it. So um, we would probably need uh, permission to get back in there. All right. That said, to our mods, we absolutely love you guys, Maui. Uh, thank you, Sophia. Miss Sophia, you are absolutely, the, I could not have asked for a, a better team lead uh, than you. We are so grateful for you. Uh, Four Sons Mom, Mimi J2, Sophia H, uh, uh, Stephanie Herb, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank uh, you. We cannot do this without you, and we are so grateful that you take your time with us. Uh, that said, you guys ready to go to Hawaii? I've got my new board and Dylan, let's go to Hawaii. Aloha, everybody. Take care of each other. Be, uh, Akamai, as I say, alert. Thank you for your kindness in our chat tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And being good to each other, especially other creators. We're grateful. We'll see you on the next one, guys. Dylan, take us out. Hard working every day, I'm stressed out 24-7, babe, no, no timeouts Wish we could fly away, you and I Go to our favorite place, oh yeah, yeah Make special memories, together I'll be your company, now and forever Face in